this is Travis. Welcome to T-Pole's Corner. Uh, today is day five of Evergreen Month where we focus on a keyword mechanic defined by Wizards of the Coast. And today's subject is Double Strike. Yesterday we did First Strike. Uh, I'll include a link uh, below to that one uh, in the YouTube text. Uh, but let's go through this deck real quick. Um, let's see, only 15 creatures and only 23 lands, so the rest is non-creature spells to support them. It's mostly white with a splash of red. And uh, what do we want to say about this? Well, let's go down to Double Strike. Here we go, Momentum Rumbler. The creature deals both First Strike and regular combat damage. Uh, so this means that they get to do their three, uh, their three power effect twice. So if they're going up against as high as a 6-6 creature, they can kill it even though they'll die. They'll get to hit him first for three points unanswered, and then you'll go into the regular combat strike where he'll get to deal the other three points. So the 6-6 six, six creature will survive the first strike from the Momentum Rumbler if the Momentum Rumbler already has the double strike. Um, but he, he will die from the second hit. Uh, a lot of people get confused on this type of thing because you can stop a double striker from hitting the target player if you just have a regular double striker attacking and he kills the guy in front of him. But if the double striker also has trample, then whatever's left of the power from the first strike gets through as well as the full second attack of trample damage. So a lot of people, this is why Embercleave is so feared when you have one copy of Embercleave in the deck because it gives a creature, if we don't have a creature that has double strike, this gives it double strike. Double strike and trample. So that can be really important. Uh, you have to remember that if the creature doesn't have trample that you can stop its attack against the player just by putting a good creature in front of it even if that creature dies. So that's some of the, hopefully that explains away some of the confusion. We'll go through the whole deck with the cards here. Most of the opening cards are really removals, ways to protect our creatures, ways to keep them on the field, that kind of thing. One fight is one, can make some creatures indestructible for a turn as we need them. One giant killer gets rid of a target creature with power four or greater. Also we can put them on, on the field as a regular human peasant afterwards and tap the target creature that we don't want to block us or maybe if uh, he's got one big creature that our first strikers just can't handle, we'll just get him out of the way with a tap. One Karametra's Blessing gives him plus two, plus two. We can also give him Hexproof and Indestructible if we've got an enchantment on him already. Three Light of Hope, uh, we can pump up our double strikers, plus one, plus one. Um, maybe use it at the last minute need to gain life if we absolutely need to. Um, hoping to allow these to destroy target enchantments, really. One copy of Righteousness. Uh, this would be really cool as a surprise move. Use a, a first striker to defend if he's got a really big monster coming at us and, and is really confident that it's going to work. Uh, having suddenly like a nine power first striker that uh, takes you out can be uh, quite jarring. I like doing that to them. One Sentinel's Eyes, it also gives the, the creature Vigilance. Vigilance was uh, our day two videos, but uh, they don't tap when they attack. It's also got escape, so we can bring it back from the graveyard later if we need to. Uh, this one copy of Disenchant in case uh, one for enchantments or if they have a pesky artifact that we can't otherwise get rid of. Uh, one Divine Arrow for removal. One Feet of Resistance that uh, hopefully will protect our creature for another day. One copy of Core Blade Master. Uh, he's got Double Strike himself, and any equipped warriors that we control will get Double Strike. So if we do get that Embercleave down later, uh, that's going to be nice. Um, not that they need double strike. Um, I think this is the only artifact that we have to equip people with. So, having double double strike doesn't do anything. It doesn't give you, there is no triple strike, at least not yet. Uh, but maybe we should give Wizards of the Coast some ideas. Okay, there you go, Wizards. Triple strike. Get working on it for the next release, will you? Uh, one copy of Pacifism, in case there's a creature that's just so strong that uh, we just can't suffer him to attack. But he doesn't have an extra ability that's going to uh, bother us if he remains on the field. Uh, one pressure point. This is kind of a uh, companion to Giant Killer. Um, you see the tap target creature. It's a companion to Swift Response. Um, there are some creatures, especially Angels, and Angels are very popular right now. And they don't tap. They have Vigilance. So pressure point might come in handy at a particular point. It replaces itself, so I don't mind having it in the deck. Um, but we can make a creature with Vigilance tap, and then we'll destroy it with Swift Response. I have four copies of Swift Response in the deck. So that's terrible to have four copies of Swift Response and come up against nothing but a bunch of Vigilance creatures. Uh, so the pressure point's there to help me out if I need it. One copy of Thunder's Orator, and he copies um, 
uh, a particular trait. If I've got a creature that attacks and my creature has double strike, Thunderous Orator gets double strike himself. So that's a nice thing to have. I've, I've got just a couple of those other spells in here that uh, will give him double strike if I don't already have a double striker out on the field. One Fire Prophecy if I just need to deal direct damage to a creature, get rid of him. One Shredded Tails. This is uh, my second spell to help me out against artifacts or against creatures with flying if I need it. Two copies of Banishing Light. Three Siege Strikers. Uh, he's a 1-1 one, one double striker when he starts out, but if I do have the chance to have more creatures out, I could tap them and just pop up Seed Striker and get him as powerful as I need so that maybe the enemy will let him through unblocked or I'll be able to handle whatever defender he's got. Four copies of Spell Eater Wolverine. He doesn't get double strike until I get three or more instant or sorcery cards in my graveyard, so I've got to make sure not to hoard onto my, my spells for too long if I've got him on the ground. Uh, one Legion Angel, and let's go check the sideboard. One, two, three, I got the others there. So the way Legion Angel works, and again, this is because you come up against all this fire decks these days. Uh, you bring Legion Angel onto the battlefield. If I have more copies outside the game, I can put it into my hand. So you can have up to four copies of a particular card in, that includes in the main hand and in your sideboard. Okay, so I've got all three in my sideboard. This basically means as long as I can afford the mana, I can just bring a Legion Angel down. Another one will be available to me until I get all four down. One copy of True Love's Kiss, again for artifacts and or enchantments. It replaces itself because you can draw a card right after. Momentum Rumbler, he doesn't have anything to start with. His, on his first attack, he gets first strike. Uh, so he'll just get to deal his first three damage before the other creature does. Then if he survives and he gets to attack a second time, he'll get double strike until the end of the turn. Okay, but the, the first strike, you get to put a first strike counter on it, so no matter what, that first strike stays with him. So second, third, fourth attack, the double strike is temporary. You can't use double strike on him as a defender uh, for the next turn, but every time he attacks, he has a chance to get double strike. That's important not to forget. Fireborn Knight costs four to get down. He's a double striker. Uh, if you have enough extra money, you can pump him up. He could come in handy. I got two copies of him. One Angel of Destiny who's got flying and double strike and a special win condition. Uh, whenever a creature that, whenever Angel of Destiny comes out on the field, okay, uh, whenever one of our creatures deals combat damage to a player after that, both that player and I as the other player gain that much life. So if Say my Fireborn Knight gets out there and does four damage. It's going to deal the four damage to the player, but then it's going to give that that same player four back in health if Dest Angel of Destiny is out on the field. Okay, so at the beginning of your end step, if you have at least 15 life more than your starting life total, each player Angel of Destiny attack this turn loses the game. So in order to win, I need to have 35 life, and the attack has to, the damage for that turn, one of those points of damage has to come from Angel of Destiny. Okay? That's the way that works. Embercleave we just went over, the rest is lands, and we're going to take this deck out for a spin. If you like what you're seeing, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button, please. We are a new channel, we can use your support. Four lands. We'll take it. I got removal, got a creature, got Embercleave already for when I'm ready for him. Got my OCD ready to put mountains on the left and plains on the right. Which removal do I want to use? Oh, it's going to be that kind of deck, is it? Uh, let's see.
Now, Double Strike has kind of changed with uh, the outing of uh, the Strict Saving expansion because we have, uh, what's his name? Blood Historian, who gives everybody Double Strike. Uh, I don't have him yet, and I've been staying away from those types of decks. Okay, now if I give him an attack now, he'll get First Strike, and he'll be able to take out anybody. So we're going to do it. Oh, no, wait. Never mind. This is the wrong one. This is the one that has to have instants or sorceries. Okay, so... Let's just do this. Okay, saw that coming. We still don't want to get hit unnecessarily by an anointed chorister. We don't need him to gain any more life. But this starts to add in the instants and sorceries into the ground. And give this guy what I want him to have. Okay, let's see. Comes with vigilance. He keeps his vigilance. They take the damage. They must have known I had something up my sleeve. I do have something up my sleeve. And these guys just want to bring out a bunch of griffins and kill me with the griffins. That's all they want to do. And this shows you the game's about luck, because he was unlucky enough there. He didn't get the life he wanted and sadly he won't get the chance to do anything more whereas we were one spell away from having a lovely double strike Get it anyway with Embercleave. So he's got 10 life right now. He probably thinks he's got time. He does not. The trick is we have to cast our instant before we attack so that Thunder's Orator can copy it. So we're going to beef him up now. That spell goes in the ground. He gets double strike, and so when we go to attack, both of them will have double strike. He's going to have to block. He's tapped out, so he can't sacrifice him. We don't mind you doing that. You know why? And he doesn't wait for the actual damage. And that took exactly seven turns, I believe. We'll take it. We've got removal. Adventures and Pulse. Creature or land? Creature. Who can be a land. Right? You know, well, you use them and tap them as a land. Okay, we have our first creature. I'm going with green and black so we could easily have removal. If we get past this round, we've got a chance to protect them. Okay. 
for his blood is ours. Oh, you would do that to me? I don't think so. Protect him from green. Because the counter stops the Heartless Act itself. Haha. -ha. Ooh, another creature. Don't mind if I do. Blockers. No blockers? Then take more damage. Because I need to fill up my graveyard with three instants so I get my double strike. Hmm. Do you think that's gonna stop me? That's not gonna stop me. Hmm. Well, he's willing to accept the trade-off. But it's on his turn, so I remove any draw advantage he was going to have. That's a fair trade for now. I've got a couple more of those in my deck. Oh, never mind. Look what he just did. Brought a couple of friends along with him. Okay, we'll just pass really quickly and make him think he's got us. He's probably expecting us to block a 1-1. One -one. But he's going to attack with Twin Blade Assassins. Because why not? He's expecting me to block the 1-1s one because I'll kill them and he'll get to draw a card. He's not expecting me to block that. Get something you're going to do about that? If it's the Twin Blade Assassins that die, you don't get to draw a card. And that's a tip from your Uncle Larry. <laughs> Another one. Okay. Is this going to be a pattern? Okay, he's doing the same thing. <coughs> Let's see if we can spoil his day. Thank you. I'm not giving you any extra card draws. I'm also taking out your biggest creature. I'm still standing better than I've ever been. Let's see, I can do four damage. You can do four damage. I'm ahead on life. You could get removal any second. 
so I'm gonna make use of this guy while I can. Okay, I don't have trample on him, so the double strike doesn't help me much there. It's basically just the first strike kills the bad chump blocker, and then his regular strike doesn't go anywhere. And this is not really a surprise at this point. Killing them as long as you got them, I will keep killing them. He can block with both, and my double striker will kill them both. He's smart enough to just use one. He's trying to equalize our health until I can no longer afford to attack. And if he keeps bringing back the same creature all the time, he may win. You're gonna kill a 1-2 creature? Alright. Keeping enough blockers. Let's see. Nice. Keeping the one as a chunk. Could you please give me anything other than land? Okay. I can't just keep drawing land and expect. Never mind. Okay. I think we're pretty much done. I think we're going to lose. A little bit ridiculous. Four lands in a row, huh? The shuffler is just fine. Woohoo! Okay, so can I do anything with that? One, two, three, no. I have to sit there and do nothing. I've been in this situation before where I have one creature that's holding off a ton of other creatures. Gonna make me lose life, isn't he? Yep. Then he's gonna start bum rushing me. Come on, send the other guy. You got a 3 6 guy over there. I can take these guys out all day, it's not going to save me. As far as you're concerned, I'm dead next turn. Call him Angel for nothing. Is that enough to save me? It doesn't look like it if they're willing to attack with everybody they got. Even this round, it looks like they have enough because they don't know what I have in my hand. Okay, 
we're gonna block you. We're gonna block you with both and kill. We're gonna gain four life. What do you got? You got not enough with me still alive. And I get two more Legion Angels. And I could have actually used, for all my complaining about the flooding of land, I could have used one more land to still be free to use the swift response. But I have three flyers, and he saw that he couldn't stop me from flying right over his head and hitting him for 12 points of damage. And that's the power of Double Strike, because I couldn't have done it without it. I'm not even sure how to pronounce that name. you? Okay, not the most ideal start, but I do have one removal, and I like having Legion Angel ready at hand for just as soon as I can cast a 4 mana creature. Last hand they flooded me with land, watch it'll be just my luck, I get nothing this time around. Yeah, we'll wait till the September rotation, then we'll probably revisit some of these decks, add in some of the Strixhaven Kaldheim cards, because we won't be able to use some of these older cards. But we'll, we'll probably update this to show you what you can still do, maybe what new synergies have opened up with the rotation of the cards in September. I just want to get as much mileage out of the cards I have while I've got access to them in Modern Standard. Unusual to bring Scoot Swarm up so quickly. I don't want to use Pacify on that one. Uh, what am I able to do? I can bring down Seed Striker. Ramping has already begun. Which means they probably have mutate creatures in hand. They probably have more ramp cards in hand and or a second scoot swarm handy in their hand. And I do have some answers to that. But who knows if they're the next card in the deck or the bottom card in the deck. And this is where the luck of the draw starts to come in. Gross. He's gonna pump everybody up, aren't you? Okay, at this point, I'll probably just take a Doom Scar instead. kind of stuck in a defensive mode on the ground, so my only hope is to bring out the Legion Angels now, fly over and thump them before he gets too far built up. However, 
getting Felidar's retreat down with Scoot Swarm at the same time while he's still got more ramp cards coming is bad news for me. Okay, so we'll just keep on bringing over the angels. Take that. And if he doesn't have an answer, actually I could technically kill him in two rounds. Extra land now. Over your head. This is really turning into a Legion Angel deck instead of a double strike deck at this point, but he, we have held him off from attacking for the most part because of our double strike capabilities. These guys are just clones. Not full clones, this is the only one that has landfall besides the original. Okay, there we go. There's one gone. That gives him a little bit more life, or at least he thinks it does. It doesn't really, because we have this. Ah, there's a blocker. But what he doesn't know is we also have this and this, and we have enough mana for all of them. So that doesn't save him either, he just thinks it does. He's tapped out, he's done everything he can, he removed a flyer, he's got a flyer blocker. He probably thinks he's in fairly good shape right at this second. He doesn't know next turn means death for him. Shall we show him? Are we going to bring down the final Legion Angel? No. No we are not. Let's see, it, all, it doesn't really matter. Hey. It might matter because my game is freezing right now. Okay, thank you. Come on, you can do it. Okay, we're going to tap you. We don't even need to destroy you. Because we're just going to pump you up. I'm not sure if that was the greatest example of double strike, uh, but it's a win, so, you know, we'll take it. Who knows how much having those double strikers on the ground really helped us. But uh, anyway, a reminder, if you liked what you saw, hit the like and subscribe button. We need all the support we can get. Tune in tomorrow. We're going to post a, a different metric, a card built around an entirely different kind of evergreen term. And uh, we'll introduce it then. Hopefully you'll be with us as well. Let's see what the prize was before we go. My first Luca. Oh, that's nice. I may have to make a deck just to use them real soon. Exile the top three cards of your library. Creature cards. Get the, You may cast this card from exile as long as you control a Luca Planeswalker. He's minus seven. Each creature you control deals damage equal to its power to each opponent. In the minus two exile target creature control, then reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a creature card with higher mana value. Put that card onto the battlefield and the rest on the bottom in the random order. All right. Yeah, I'm going to have to use him before he goes away, that's for sure. All right. Thank you for watching, folks. Tune in next time. T-Pull out.